Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, man. First and foremost, I wanna thank you for watching, subscribing, and we're gonna start it off with giving the June baits away, man. Uh, went through there and randomly picked three winners. So if I say your name, send me an email through my website and uh, give me your address. And I'm not gonna say I'm gonna mail them, but my wife's gonna mail them to you. So. The first guy, Anthony Wiggins. He said, uh, I really appreciate your videos. I don't have boat full of electronics, nor 30 Technique Pacific rods, though that would be nice, LOL. I also live up north, but your videos always get into the meat and potatoes of how you can still catch them. Thanks for that. Your kind fishing info is priceless. Thank you, Anthony, for the comment, man. That means a lot to me to uh, see that. Jason Bryant's the second random I picked. Favorite channel, always informative and entertaining. Thank you, Jason, I appreciate it a bunch. And last but not least, the last winner for the June video, Raymond Steele. I love getting notifications that you post. Thanks for doing that. You're a subscriber, you've hit the bell. Uh, but he says, I love getting notifications that you post. I've, lo I've learned so much and caught so many fish from your advice. Thanks for offering your knowledge. Please keep up the great work. Absolutely, Raymond, and I appreciate you guys leaving a comment. I am going to get those baits mailed out to you. The, uh, the hair jigs will probably come separate uh, directly from uh, Andy's Custom Bass Jigs because my boat's not here. It's en route to the next tournament and uh, I don't have a whole lot of them myself, but you will get those also in addition. Uh, let's recap a couple things. Let's, uh, let's recap or, or bring up to date uh, a couple things that we haven't touched on in a while. One of them is my tracking bass movements video. Let me just tell you what happened there, guys. That creek, Blue Creek on Ulagal, they drew it down. Like it got super low all spring. You know, there was a bunch of pits I wanted to fish in. You know, when I thought of this idea, I thought, man, it'll be a good creek. That creek is little bitty. I, I mean, it just, it did not work this spring because the water was so low. Uh, I will get back out there. I'm a little hesitant because I just, it's got the creek small. Like I feel like a caged animal in that thing. I'm going to do this video series again. I'm gonna just pick a much bigger creek where I've got some variety to choose around. Um, but just the lake got really low. Um, they were working on the dam, working on the uh, riprap of the bridge. And uh, it just wasn't what I was hoping it would be. It just, it wasn't, but uh, I'm not done with it. I am gonna finish that series out and uh, do a whole new lake for you guys. The next update I'm so excited is, man, I got one of my permits out of the way. I got the OWRB, that's Oklahoma Water Resource Board permit for the lake. Awesome, awesome deal. So that's step one. Now I'm still going through the Corps of Engineer permits. Uh, those are gonna take a while. Um, but we are working through those. I, a lot of people have been asking about the lake. I promise you, there's nobody that wants to get started on it quicker than I do, but I just want to do it right. And uh, I, you know, I just don't want to cause any trouble or you know, get in trouble, really. I, I got in trouble enough as a kid. I don't want to get in trouble as an adult. Uh, so that's the update on that, Wait, waiting on the Corps of Engineers permit. There's one of these days we're going to be looking right out there and we're going to see some water, but uh, it's just going to have to wait till we get the permits. Uh, then lastly, man, I got some super cool episodes coming up, guys. Uh, we filmed all this week and offshore fishing, a bucktail jig, uh, cranking, uh, a lot of those baits that we talked about in the June deal. I went out and we filmed videos on those and uh, I caught some great big fish and a lot and had a lot of fun filming them. Uh, you guys want to be on the lookout for those coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, but I appreciate you guys following along. Let's dive off into Dayton, Tennessee, Chattanooga. Uh, this recap, uh, just to fast forward you or to catch you up to date, we did a video on my first day. I had 74 pounds, it was an epic, epic day. Uh, we did a video on how I modified that crankbait, how I made that crankbait silent. So then we get to the qualifying day two. My GoPros didn't work. I had a few uh, uh, wiring issues in my boat. Got all that resolved, but I don't have any footage from that day. I mean, it wasn't a great day to begin with. I really looked and every spot I wanted to fish had a boat on it. Um, 
so we went to the knockout round and that is where we are going to start right here uh, so I'm gonna get dive off into it and let's break this down here we are taking off out of Richland Creek one of the first few boats out I don't remember yeah but pretty early because we you know we were um, I think I qualified second so I got Rick in the boat again and uh, he works hard on this he's gonna be standing as I get this takeoff shot you can see I got the C map pulled up. I got one of them with the uh, Google Earth background, but uh, we're gonna break down Chickamauga Lake right here, my knockout round and how it went. It was, a, it was an exciting day. And one thing I wanna say, stick around to the very end of this video because that's where it got exciting. I, I was that close to making it, uh, but you guys are gonna wanna see what happened. So here we are, I'm gonna get this thing kind of fast forward in here, running out of this creek. And we are running down the lake now. Okay, here we are. We started the day right there where uh, I caught a lot of those first fish. Uh, and it turns out, you know, after this event's over, this is where Jason Lambert train wrecked him, I think on the next day after me. And uh, so these fish really kind of disappeared on me. I, I, I looked up and down this ledge and I did never find them. Uh, so I kind of move around a little bit I think I've, I've moved to the next spot right here, throwing the worm, we're picking the trolling motor up, the ghost, and we're moving again. Oh, I think I idle over these. I find these right then. This was a, this was a spot I saw in, in practice, and I, I didn't fish it yet, and I thought I was gonna train wreck them. So I'm, you can see I'm looking. You know, I, it's right off the bat and I'm looking. I'm trying to find a brand new group of fish. I haven't fished here before. I mean, I'm still all the time looking, trying to find the next mother load of them. I'm looking at my screen right there and I'm gonna shut down here and idle over something else. And when I idle over stuff, it's just a high spot or a turn or a drop off or, you know, just something different on that C-map. It's important that you don't go too fast when you're idling over that stuff because you just won't see out to the side. You won't see them on the bottom. And this is super critical, guys. Like for, for me... Brother, you don't have my name on it. What's the deal? <laughs> Give my score tracker uh, updates a hard time. I said, man... My name's not on there, but you can notice I throw directly behind the boat, guys. That is a fishing tip I want to give you. When you idle over those fish, don't turn your boat, don't do anything. It's the best line in the world, your wake right behind the mercury, just to throw directly into it, because I know that bait is going to go through where I saw those fish on my Lowrance. And here's proof right here. Now I'm backing up, I'm turning my boat after my baits hit the water. I know it's going down right where those fish were at. Gosh, that's a big one. That's a big one. I thought it was a big one, but uh, that's it's the a first big one. one. I've had strip drag. It was a mean one. I'm gonna put it that way. He did not like me putting that hook in his face. I hadn't caught one here all week. Come on, baby. It ain't that big, but it's a it's a scorable. He's just mean. Oh, it makes you feel good to get the day started. Bigger than I thought he was. A little too big to be swinging. All right, all right, all right. Three pounds, nine ounces. We're on the board, we're on the board. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, thank you. We got it started, look at that. Just perfect, perfect specimen. Perfect specimen. I was pretty excited because I felt like there's quite a few fish right there. And uh, I go, 30 minutes, I don't catch I don't catch another one there. That was the only one. I just say it right there, they're all out there. And I, th I feel like once they're off that structure, I just can't catch them. So I'm gonna fast forward to the next fish. I don't catch another one there. And uh, it's just part of that offshore fishing when you exploit them like that. I don't know what happens. Uh, I try them hard. I got the spinning rod out now. Now, what I did here I moved to the other side and I'm bringing them a bait the complete other way and I get another one. 30 minutes later though, I mean, it's it's a long time later. It's gonna be a, uh, just a scoreable bass, but a fish. 
And I'm pretty sure that's on the worm again. All right, guys, this one has to be a two pounder. I caught quite a few in there. Cause I'm just saying right there, lots of non-scorables. Two, four, sweet. What did we ever do before we had anchor mode in those trolling motors? Isn't that awesome to sit there and make that exact same cast? <laughs> My cameraman, I love Rick. Switch He's so up. excited. Still throwing that same hit worm, just a different color. I got a green pumpkin on. I, I don't know that it, color's super important, but I uh, thought I'd at least show them something a little bit different. I really wanted to come down here and just hit all this stuff I'd been hitting really quick this morning. And then kind of go exploring a little bit more. Oh, I hate setting the hook to that direction. That's hard on me because it's just not a, I don't know why it, it's, I don't move the rod as much. The rod moves a lot more this way for me than this way. But we get him in the boat. He's close, he's close, he's close. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no, but I'm hoping. I'm, I got high hopes. Hey! <laughs> it is so hard to watch yourself. You don't realize how goofy you are. Two pounds or not. It's whether he just ate a shad or not. Cause they all, but then you'll have one that looks like it's two pounds and it'll weigh a pound 13 ounces. I don't understand it. I'll take it. I'm gonna argue with it. I'm not gonna argue with throwing a stinking worm either. I, I'd much rather be cranking. I'll get some crankbait fish going today. That sun will stay out. Turns out Jason was fishing this spot too. You can see that house in the background. Uh, watching live the final day driving home, he was sitting right there and he fished this spot a bunch too. It just, we were both, you know, using the same fish and you don't know that in major league fishing because he's out there on a different day than i am got me one here on the dredger one of my silent ones the back hook I like it when they bite the crankbait. It happens so much quicker. Get out of there, buddy. And that fusion hook had him. Be two pounds. Oh, two yeah. pounds, seven ounces. This is my demise. So I had that fish there at, oh, uh, you know, two hours into my day or an hour and 45 minutes into my day, I do not catch another one almost three hours. Well, at the end of the first period. So I, I just, too long of a dry spell. That's, that's kind of, it's another hour. I start moving around, you can see, I'm fishing a lot of different spots. I try to get on this spot and this is the spot right here. Uh, then I caught the eight, seven and had all those other big fish. Well, there's another boat on it like the entire time. Um, didn't realize that he never left. Uh, hats off to him. I mean, he found it too. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, I just wasn't gonna fish it with him. So we just keep moving around, keep moving around. And in my mind, I feel like I can just find another group, a fresh, fresh group that's moved up. I feel like that's how you win tournaments, not keep trying to get ones that you've educated over the last four days to bite again you know that's just i just don't i don't like that i want to find a brand new group you know it's just the ledge events that i've won on kentucky river and finished really high it's always when i'm because i'm finding fish as the tournament progresses to me that's like the biggest key and and for you guys that are fishing multiple day events keep that in mind it's hard to do but it's definitely rewarding Oh, my drag's backed off. That feels like a good one. This is a good fish for me because there's a lot of fish here. This is a really community spot. Um, 
So I, I bring out the, uh, this fish is caught on a Ned rig. I've just, I've taken that same Berkeley hit worm, bit it down small, put it on a little quarter ounce Ned head. <laughs> that makes me so excited. Stay on there, stay on there. Come here, 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 come here. Would that be better if I'd catch it on a crankbait? Gotcha. Man, we're pulling out the... Three pounds, four ounces. Yes, three, four. Three, four, three, four. Just got a few minutes, guys. I gotta make another cast. I think these fish right here, are the most pressured fish on the lake, in my opinion. I mean, I I tried to start here in the FLW, and there's like five boats on it. I didn't even attempt to come here. This is the first time I've tried to come here in the whole tournament. It just this is like community number one. Well, that last one, it, I mean, you talk about. <laughs> Homo, <laughs> I mean, super finesse. I caught some fish on this in practice. I'm just taking that same hit worm. I think that thing's called a Nico rig, but this is where I caught them because this is just such a community spot here. Just trying to show them something a little bit different, but we got one, we got one. So I'm gonna get everything retied. Hopefully we can get some more. There's a lot here. I take that back. I caught that fish on a Nico rig. Now that I'm, I'm watching my recap, there's a bunch there. I, I can do it really good, but that's the thing when those schools have been fished for and fished for and fished for, they just, they're educated fish, hard to catch in my opinion, like unless the current starts rolling or something changes. I kind of am under the assumption, I, I move around a lot, like this period I'm moving and moving and moving because I, I just, I want to find a, a group of fish that I can catch and I can catch them in a hurry. So I only catch two bass in this round. Looking back, I probably, Maybe should have just locked down on some of those schools a little harder, moved around on them a little bit more just to see if I could get those to bite. Um, I don't know. We're back on a spot where I've caught fish all week. It's, it's one of them spots that I've been sharing with a lot of other people. It looks like I've got the, the hip worm now. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I think they got smaller as they come to the boat. Huh? I apologize. No, that's all right. Two pounds, four ounces. Two, four. I'll take that. Got another scoreable. Too long between bites, that's the problem. Just too long. Again, I turned, turned the other direction. I came across them this way just to show them a different angle and uh, end up catching another one. But you know, I need to be catching these fish on every cast type of deal. Like have that flurry like we had the first day to, you know, I'm, uh, maybe, maybe. I'm pretty far down that score tracker. I'm not out of reach, but you know, I have to be in the top eight today to make it. Yeah. Two pounds, you're on. Yes. <laughs> the rush of emotions. It said two, then it went to 115, then it went back to two. Couple things on that worm, just to keep in mind, guys. Uh, don't get too big a line. It's not about, you gotta get the bite before you're ever gonna break a fish off. That, that lighter that line, it helps keep that bait down on the bottom. It's just a better, better deal for you. So the most I'd ever use is 14. I actually went down to 12, it started clearing up. Uh, I wanted to have a light head. The lighter the head, it made me slow it down. You know, if I've got a super heavy head, 
then I can just work it faster because I've always got contact with the bottom. So I've got like a, a 5 16 head on here and it just, it makes it, makes me work it a lot quicker. So man, just a horrible second period for me, just two scoreable bass, um, it hurt pretty bad. So I start moving around. I, I still know in my mind I can make this happen. I just got to find the right group. I, I just start moving around a bunch. Um, and I just don't ever really find them until we get to right here. I idle over those same fish that I started on right here. Nothing, nothing. I'm looking like half mile this way, half mile that way, just trying to find them. You can just see I'm stopping. I idle over any of these spots where I marked fish in practice and uh, ends up being a boat right here. I, I, they're locals. They, they, I just stay out of their way. I think they said it was fine or whatever, but I just, if they're fishing for them, they're probably already been exploited. Uh, so we just keep running. I'm just making short little moves here and idling and, and looking at stuff and uh, not really finding them, obviously. You know, there's no fish on the score tracker. So we run back around here. Yeah, this spot I thought would be good. And we run back over here and I find them, like I find them big time right here. 10 pounds out of the cut line, which is nothing on a ledge, ledge tournament. I got my foot on the throttle here. I can't reel that crankbait any faster, I promise you. So here I'm just standing on the back of the boat, just the way the boat's positioned. And, uh, oh, <laughs> and of course, you can see right here, I'm, I'm down the score tracker. Like, I'm out of commission. I'm out of, uh, I'm not, they, the camera guys and producers back there, they don't think I'm gonna catch them. So, they take my microphone off, they take everything off, and he gets out of the boat. He's like, I'm done with you, Edwin. He doesn't say that, but he's gonna go to somebody else. And uh, I'll just show you guys right here. Here comes, he's getting out of my boat. They're real, real courteous about it. They come on the outside of you. They, they, they're super good. That's just really neat working with these camera guys that, man, they just, they're super, super easy to work with. Like, they'd wait till when I'm ready if, they, if I wanted them to, and they'll come outside your deal, come up on trolling motor. It's really a cool deal. I just hate it. It stinks that he's getting out. Like, they've given up on me, and, and just watch what happens right here. Uh, Rick's out, going to the next angler. Let's see how long it is. It's not very long. We're at 641 when he gets out. And at 643, that's how many hours my cameras have been running. That's not the time of the day. Uh, right here. Got that Nico rig out. Jordan Lee is in second here. If you watch, I'm sitting there going to reel it in and it loads up. I think this fish had had it for a while. I think he ate it on the on the downfall. And uh, that fish had it swallowed. It had it the whole time. <laughs> I didn't know. It's something, really something about that made it so light. You know, I think this one, I had an eighth ounce rigged up on it. Wind's blowing, you got current. And uh, he ate it on the fall because a lot of these here on this spot were suspended. Six pound test. I've gone to six on this one because it's so light just to help it get down to the bottom. I, I always feel like, I don't know, it doesn't hurt. Just makes me take a little longer to get them in. So scared on my line because it's got it swallowed. Just take my time with her and she's mine, you know what I mean? Right? You want to rush it in so bad, but that's the worst thing to do. I go from this, taking five minutes to land one, to the first day I land one in 30 seconds, you know? They were hitting the crankbait or something? Yeah. And they called the lines out. I can't wait for Rick to <laughs> see this thing on score tracker. Oh, 
gosh, barely hooked too. Got her. I got her. Yes, sir. -y. We got her. We got her. Nice one. Four pounds, 11 ounces. Bummer. I thought she was bigger than that. Zero that thing. Let's do that one more time. Hey, in my defense, my camera guy, or not my camera. Oh. My boat fell. He said, you can use second scale one time. He thought it was bigger. I talked to him like he would never say during the event. But the, at the end of the event, he said, man, I thought that fish was bigger too. So it wasn't just me. So weighing it twice. I'm just holding it here. He's going to take a picture of it and send it into Major League Fishing. I'm trying to hold it low. There's a boat going by. And uh, all right, so I caught a 411. I'm pretty excited about it. I get rigged back up, throwing this Nico rig. It was suspended, uh, and it, they all looked like that size. That size on my Lowrance. Hear a jet going over right there. But man, I, I I didn't know at the time. But man, I'm thinking it could be good. So I go a little bit before I get the next bite. How far am I gonna go? Ten minutes. Throw that Nico rig around there, but uh, you know, I started off on this spot cranking, like I cranked them hard, did some other stuff, you know, the, the stand up worm. Um, nothing, nothing, nothing. So I end up turning myself just to throw at a different angle on them. I get to the downwind side, and this is when I figure out the cast. So that's, that's, a, that's a critical deal, guys. So I was upwind, throwing downwind, throwing, 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 caught that one. I come around them, fish are here, I come around them, I get on the downwind side for whatever reason, and I throw to them, and this happens. I, I mean, I start catching them. I, I feel pretty good about putting a lot of heat on those fish, even though it's a light line right off the bat, because I've got so much line out then after that's when I back off of them. But it doesn't bother me in my career, even if six pound test to set the hook really firmly hard. Uh, just cause you got to think about how much line out, you know, it's 18 feet deep right here. Uh, you know, it's a long ways away. So, I, you know, if you've ever, one thing to do just to, to understand what I'm talking about, just hold your line and have somebody or kid or something walk, walk a long cast out and have them jerk on as hard as you can, obviously bad, without a hook, but it's, you don't pull near as hard as you really think you do. Two pounds, zero ounces. All right. Get rigged back up. Takes me a minute to get rigged back up. Putting the old foot back. I think something's fixing to happen. I'm watching that active target and I can see something up there. I'm backing up and I didn't set the hook yet. But I, I, I don't know why, but I... I Such a light bite. There it goes. So I've got this on a, uh, I'll give you a power stop breakdown in a minute on, on all this stuff. It's kind of important. My mind, I'm making it. I'm like right now. I'm, I'm gonna make the championship. Two pounds, nine ounces. One of the problems was that was one of my last weights. I think I'd go into a three sixteenths, a little heavier Ned rig weight, and that was my last one. If not right there, it's my next one. Is my last one. So I go a little bit. Looks like I go. 20 minutes without getting a bite. He had it the whole time. 
Two pounds, nine ounces. Mm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That one's on a drop shot. Yeah, I, I changed it up because I made so many casts. I, you know, I went there in 20, 30 minutes without getting a bite. I still can see all those fish out there. It's just amazing to me that you just, you change it up. That was the very first cast with a drop shot and I catch a two nine. But then here I go quite a bit more before I get the next bite. They tear up that drop shot so bad when you're casting it and uh, I'm retying it all and taking my time to make sure it's right. Oh, I wish it was a bass. Yeah, I break it off instead of going up there. I didn't want to go up there and get it. I just, I feel, I feel like the less amount of time, it's, I'd rather take the time to retie. I don't, I just don't want to go up and disturb them. So what do I get out here? Oh, I just throw me out like a, a weightless general. Uh, I'm gonna have something in the water. I'm, I'm gonna let it sink to the bottom while I'm retying that drop shot. I. I didn't catch one on it, but there's a day and a time coming and I've done it in the past. Just have a bait in the water. You know, it's gonna take me a minute or two because I broke my leader off, broke everything off on that drop shot. So I just threw a weightless general out there. I know it's gonna take a long time to get to the bottom. It's something that they would hold on to and swallow and I don't even pay it any attention. I just, I'm hoping, high hopes, when I go up there and pick it back up, I got one, but I don't. So we got a camera coming back in our boat. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. It's a good thing. I, I'm probably pretty upset just because, man, you just got out and now 30 minutes later you want to get back in, which I don't blame them. They're trying to cover the sport. They're trying to cover that cut line. But uh, here I am. Like, I moved up to maybe 8th, ninth, 10th place. I'm not really sure, but I'm really close to making the cut. And uh, I'm, I just need, like, a fish. And in my mind, I'm sitting here, like, over this, this little dry spell, there's another spot half mile away that I caught that three, four earlier in the day and I wanted to go back and look at it. And uh, it's crazy, like a boat would pull up on it and he'd be gone and another one would pull up on it. Boat, then, and I'm like, every time I'd almost go to it, a boat would pull up onto it. Cause I could see it just right over there. And I just, back in my mind, I'm still thinking today, man, if I'd have made it over there, I might've caught the one more fish I needed. Man, I got a mess in this boat, don't I? I don't know if it's a 3-4 or not, but I think it might be close. Sweetheart, just come up here. Say hello to the world. Come on, come on, come on. It's not a 3-4, but it's a good one. Two pounds, 11 ounces. So now I'm a pound, like just a little over a pound. I just need a scoreable bass. And the time is going down quickly. It's one thing about Major League Fishing, you know exactly what you got right up to the very end. And uh, man, I'm trying hard. I'm trying so hard because I want to make that championship round so bad. And your 12 score will pass today. Your total weight is 32 pounds, four ounces. You're in 10th position, nine ounces behind Andy Morgan in eight. Nine ounces out right now, nine. I'm just like, bite it, bite it, bite it, bite it. Just, I need a bite, I need a bite. You know, looking back, maybe I should have thrown a football jig out there. That was one thing that I had some bites on in practice that for whatever reason, I never got it out of the box. And, uh, you know, looking back, what could I have done different in this last five minutes? Throw a football jig, it would have been a little quicker, uh, a little heavier, uh, a different look. It, you know, watching this footage here, every time I changed a bait, Went from the Nico rig, started catching them. Went to the drop shot, caught one immediately. Picked up the Ned rig, caught one immediately. 
I should have showed these fish a different bait and uh, throw that spinning rod, throw everything around, trying to catch one, trying to catch one. And it, it's gotten to the point now where I don't have much time left, so I'm not working this bait correctly. And I decide to, you know, I've got basically five, five, six minutes left. If I can just fire them up on that crankbait, I can take all this pent up energy I have trying to get a bite, a bite, a bass to bite by just winding that crankbait that much faster, you know, trying to trigger one. So I decided just to pick up the dredger and I'm gonna go down in a blaze of glory in the last few minutes. I just get after it right here. Like I'm gonna go to the back Watch deck can't cast with you standing there. and I'm just gonna fan cast it. Just, just go back and forth where they're at and just try to, go to the front deck. try to trigger one. I gotta get these guys to the front so I can just let it fly. Uh, I just don't wanna hook them and uh, doesn't happen. It does not happen. I don't know if you guys can see on my chesty, but I'm standing on the back and I'm just fan casting. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hmm. Dang it. Hard to be happy right now. I don't know what to say. I just, uh, what do you need? You want me? <laughs> so the last thing I'm wanting to do is wrap up my week, talk about baits and equipment when I just meet, missed the championship round by a pound, four ounces. And uh, I need a minute just to breathe. So I'm gonna recap my day from Major League Fishing for the, the fans watching live. And you know, right here, this could be my power stop breakdown. I'm just getting out all the, the different rods that I caught bass on this week. And, and uh, I just, you know, if you ever watch Major League Fishing, it's not really what I'm trying to do right now. As you can hear, I'm kind of exasperated. I'm kind of frustrated that I didn't get any Ready? bites. But once this is over, I want to I want to show you guys one thing that I did make a big mistake on. Hey guys, here's my general tire takeout. Uh, man, I came up a little short. Uh, it is what it is. That first day, I caught the majority of all my fish on that bait right there. That's just a dredger 20.5 lavender shad. I've got that on a 7.6 mag heavy. Bass Pro Shops cranking stick and a 6 8 to 1 reel, 12 pound test. I had to winch that fish in like with a minute, minute, 15 seconds. Um, I also caught some fish this week on that brand new color, uh, Tennessee Shad. It's a really cool color, 17.5. And then the rest of the damage all came on the hit worm. And I was rigging it uh, a bunch of different ways. I had it Nico styled on a, a 7 4 platinum medium action rod, 10 pound Bass Pro braid, 8 pound fluorocarbon leader. I had it Ned Rig style, I just cut the worm off a little bit, same thing, you know, 10 pound test, 8 pound leader, and then, uh, you know, early in the week I'd get them to bite that stand up real good, and I just had the same worm, the hit worm, on a little stand up head, 12 pound test, Bass Pro uh, Platinum Reel, high speed though, so I can reel up that slack really quick, a 7.3 heavy action carbon light rod, but as my setup, we got close to making it happen, uh, I just ran out of time, yeah. The, the mistake that I think I made right there at the very end, um, and I realized it after it was all said and done, I was missing those fish. Like when I went to the back deck and I started throwing off the back deck, I needed to throw, like I, I thought I was throwing right where they were at and I wasn't. So it's just always important to make sure you're casting where you need to cast, have a lineup, have, have all that stuff. And it doesn't ever hurt if you're not getting bit to troll the motor over them and then throw back the other way. That way you make sure you're throwing exactly where you need to throw to get those bites. But yeah, guys, that one hurt. I was really wanting to go to the next round, but all in all, a great event. I, I got a lot of points back that I lost at Harris Chain, you know, moved up into the above those cut lines that I need for those end of the year championship. And, and you know, great, great heavy hitters fish this week with that eight, nine in the, in the previous round. So uh, super excited about that. The next event, one of the places I've won, one of my most favorite places in the world is a St. Lawrence Seaway giant small mouth, lots of them, big large mouth up there, believe it or not. We're gonna see some of those weighed in, uh, you know, 180 degrees, a different direction. We're going to New York and we're going, we're gonna chase small mouth. I, I'm not gonna chase large mouth. You don't go up north to catch large mouth. You go, you go to Tennessee River, you go to Oklahoma to catch large mouth. I'm gonna chase small mouth, but 
All in all, a good event. I wish it would have ended a little different. I needed one pound, four ounces, one squirrelable bass. It's just such a fine line, guys. And I can find lots of mistakes in my day that, you know, any of those fish I lost or efficiency where, you know, maybe I could have made that up. But I'm not going to beat myself up too bad on it. I, I'm pretty bad about that at times. So didn't get it done. I don't know what else to say, guys. But uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for following along, Project D. E. Be on the lookout for July Bates video and where to start in July. We're giving another Optimum Battery away in that video, just like we do in every where to start video of the month. And uh, uh, appreciate you guys following along, being fans and supporting supporting the Project E cause. Hey, I do have some new hats too. I, I've mentioned that I think in a video before, but uh, I kind of like them. Hope you guys have a great week. Take care.